excessive use of special weapons and SWAT teams have caused harm to innocent people and consequently made communities more insecure. Our correspondent, Alice Olstein, met the mayor of a small town in the outskirts of Washington, who was a victim of a SWAT team operation. Now, other people support him in establishing new laws that control the police and make them responsible for the use of military equipment. It was a calm evening here in idyllic Berwyn Heights, Maryland, until armed police raided the home of an unsuspecting family. I heard my mother-in-law scream. Uh, it was a really frightened scream that didn't make any sense. She said, Shy, I think it's SWAT. The reason? A box of marijuana delivered to his house. Though no evidence connected him to the drugs, police didn't leave for more than four hours after shooting his two dogs with a machine gun. We didn't have a warrant. We didn't have a front door. Um, we thought that there was some drug dealer out there who thought we had the drugs. And uh, we had a, a, a house that was torn upside down with a search and, and two enormous pools of blood. Shai eventually recovered and even adopted new dogs. <laughs> but he's since learned that similar traumatic incidents happen to hundreds of families every year in his county alone. Violent raids on homes like this one in suburban Maryland are increasing across the country. Critics say they're turning American neighborhoods into war zones as equipment from overseas conflicts in Iraq and Afghanistan gets repurposed for local police departments. Over the past few years, local police departments like this one in Boston have been given millions of dollars of military equipment free of charge. Congress created the program to reuse hardware like these vehicles left over from U.S. wars in Iraq and Afghanistan. But an investigation by the American Civil Liberties Union found that more than a third has been newly purchased for police. Researchers say that with the military gear has come a military mentality. Police officers are being trained to believe that they are soldiers going into battle when they go into communities. And we find this troubling because their mandate is to protect and serve. And public confidence in law enforcement is really eroded when police act like soldiers going into battle. A nationwide investigation found that the use of militarized police teams has dramatically increased over the past few decades. Police, police, police! Tens of thousands of homes are now raided by SWAT teams every year, a trend critics say has strayed from the program's original purpose. The SWAT team, Special Weapons and Tactics, was created in the 1960s to deal with real emergency situations like active shooter scenarios, uh, barricade situations, hostage-taking situations. But we're seeing over the last several decades, increasingly, SWAT teams being used for all sorts of purposes, most alarmingly, we think, to serve search warrants in drug cases, often for very small amounts of drugs. Yeah. The police force that raided Shai's house say their frequent use of SWAT teams has led to safe execution of high-risk operations. But the mayor maintains changes needed, locally and nationally. My family and I found justice more quickly than most. And we are very fortunate, we are fine. I, I am concerned that if we don't fix the systemic problems, the people who are affected by this will continue to be affected by this. It's unlikely that a SWAT team's ever gonna visit my door again. One here, one here, one here, one here. Though it's painful to do so, Shai plans to keep telling his story to rally support for restraining military-style police tactics so people in Maryland and nationwide can feel safe in their own homes. Alice Olstein for Telesaur in Washington.